Hey yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Tony Austin One and today uh we're gonna be taking a look at how to create weapon tilt sway. So before we get started, here's what we have so far. So this is what you'll get once you create weapon tilt sway. So in, in, in this example, I'm rotating the weapon on around the x-axis and the z-axis. So you can see how it moves. It feels like, you know, it looks like it has some, some weight, you know, it has some sense of weight. Uh, you can change it here, you can change it if you, do, you don't want it to be the x, you can make it on the y-axis instead. Uh, and you can see it sort of has this sort of nice weight and it feels like it's heavy, you know. Uh, and you have some parameters here for how much uh, you want to multiply the rotation by, the maximum uh, rotation in degrees, uh, and the rotation lerping value, which is like how quickly it comes back to its original position. Do remember to check out my Patreon. Please support me there. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you have any work for me, check out my, my Fiverr account. Um, you know, you can get there too, and, and you know, I'll, I'll be happy to work for you there. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so this is where we uh, where we left off last time, where we had some basic positional sway, uh, which is pretty cool, you know, pretty decent, you know. And uh, but yeah, rotational sway always makes a difference. So there are a couple things that we will have to change. Uh, but before that, let's go ahead to the code, the script itself, and let's take a look what we need to do. So this is a script. Uh, first of all, the first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to edit the script, um, and we're going to uh, uh, clean it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, this sort of keeps things more managed and whatnot. So um, another thing I would like to do is I would like to add a header here just so we know that these variables are responsible for the position and, and whatnot. Um, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and create some variables for our rotational sway. So so uh, just a bunch of variables here. Uh, this we might rename. So if you're using Visual Studio, uh, you can do this very cool little thing, which is you press Control R, and then you press you, you hold Control and you press R twice, and that way you can change the variable uh, in the entire scope of the like in the entire project, so the entire solution. Uh, it's very cool, very convenient. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call this input X, and I'm going to call this uh, input Y. So this sort of keeps things more managed. Uh, so I actually know what's going on here. Uh, and I'll be able to sort of tell, hey, you know, like this is a, this is my input, you know, better better variable naming, you know, so clean code, better variables, consistency. Okay, so um, now we obviously need to get our initial initial position, which is just going to be transform dot local rotation. So our initial rotation is going to be in a position, uh, and th so basically we can go get back and can return back to the initial. So if you have not. By the way, if you haven't watched uh, my previous video, you might want to check that out. The previous weapons way video, it's very important because uh, this is a follow-up to that. Uh, it's pretty old, but you know that, that's that. This is all what we covered in that video. Um, and rotation is obviously the new concept here. So now what we need to do is we actually need to uh, essentially create our position, uh, and it's going to be relatively simple. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. A couple things we're gonna do. Uh, basically, we can essentially copy and paste this whole thing here, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So move X, move Y, same thing, exactly the same thing, but we're going to rename some variables. So final position is going to be called final rotation, um, and there's going to be some differences here, obviously, as well. Uh, we're going to say local rotation uh, and all that. Let, let, let's start with this. So we have input X into, instead of multiplying by amount, we're going to multiply this by the rotation amount. And we're going to have a uh, max rotation amount. I'm just going to copy this all over. So basically, we have our input. We're multiplying it by the rotation amount. And we are clamping it between the, the negative value of rotation and the positive value of rotation, max value. So basically, uh, the, max, the maximum our, our object can rotate is 10 degrees. Um, yeah, that's about it. In this case, it's 10 degrees. Um, you can obviously re reduce this value if you're not happy with that. 
Um, let's go ahead and let's continue with this. So this is obviously going to be a quaternion because this is a rotation, and we're gonna call this uh, quaternion dot Euler. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So here, here we have a little, you know some things that might get or might seem more complicated. Uh, I might I might change this to uh, tilt instead of rotation uh, instead of move. So let's actually do that. So. Um, um, because rotation works differently than position, uh, and we're rotating around an axis, not on it. So basically what that means is we're rotating around the y-axis, which is the, the arrow. Uh, you might see the green arrow in your scene view, we're rotating around it. And the red arrow is the x-axis, so we're rotating around the x-axis. Uh, and the, so on and so forth, you know, the, the Z or Z, whatever you guys want to call it, is the blue arrow, and we can rotate around it, okay? So that's why, that's why there's some name changes here. Um, so a few things we're going to do. We also want a couple more variables to actually accommodate for the couple things you saw before, which is, you know, rotating around certain axes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a few a couple of variables here. Um, and if you scroll down now, uh, we have basically have we, um, some some settings here. Uh, let's go ahead here, and I'm gonna kind of make things more complicated here. So bear with me. This is not that difficult, uh, and there's probably better ways of doing it. But you know, knowing me and how lazy I can be, this is uh, the thing that I'm going to essentially do. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing rotation x. What does this mean? Uh, simple words. Uh, this is, this is, I think we've done this. This is called, uh, I think, what was it called? A ternary operator? I can't remember the name of the operator. I'll probably put it up on the screen somewhere. Uh, but basically, this is a, a more smart if statement, you can call it. Uh, and it's, you've done this before. But what it does is it checks, hey, is rotation true? Uh, question mark, right? Is it true? If it's true, then um, the value that's going to be inputted here is going to be tilt y. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. That's all it does. So we are just going to make use of the other angles to keep being simple. Uh, so we're converting uh, a ve ve vectors, the vector things that we have into an angle, uh, into a rotation, basically. Um, and here we're going to do the same thing. So rotation. Uh, uh, I'm also going to probably do a couple things here. Yeah, I'm going to do a couple things here. Um, this needs to be tilt x. I'll also uh, show you that in a second because we're moving left and right, and uh, we'll we'll see how this how this actually operates. Uh, and then we have rotation y that is going to be rotation y. And then finally we have rotation z, which is going to be tilt y. Um, and that's it. So so. To break this down, we can obviously sort of we can obviously put we can put it like this if it's confusing for you guys. Uh, uh, so the reason why we're doing it on certain axes do do take note of tilt x, negative tilt x, uh, tilt y, and tilt y. This is very important. This is how our input is going to essentially function, uh, and we're gonna we're, we're making use of our input to rotate it on a di on different axes uh, and sort of arrange it properly because otherwise. Um, it's gonna feel kind of kind of wonky and it's not it's gonna like feel awkward rather um right and then we have uh finally we we can get back to the rotation part so here we have transformed a local rotation we're gonna set this here's how we're gonna do it we're gonna say uh quaternion because it's a rotation and instead of a lerp we're gonna use s lerp which is a spherical uh interpolation you can see spherically interpolates between a and b the, what this is, I'm going to explain right now. Uh, if you go here, uh, probably not there, but I think it was here. Yeah, so if you go here, uh, you can see that this this straight line, so imagine that you're going from this value, this is a value of 1, and you're going to a value um, of 0, so on the, on the y-axis you're going to be a value of 0, uh, over, uh, so on the x-axis you have time, on the y-axis you have the value, right? So the time is one second, uh, and and the value is one here. So you want uh, the value of one to go to zero over a time of one second. This is how linear, how it interpolates, how it moves to zero uh, linearly. So you can see linearly, it goes straight down to zero. But if it was in more of a, you know, if you were to 
interpolated spherically, it would go like this. So it would go all the way around. And it sort of gives you this sort of natural motion, this more dynamic uh, motion, you know, uh, which 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 is pretty nice. You can play around with the, in, in the position department as well. Uh, and this is why we're going to use this instead of uh, the normal LERP. Uh, and that's about it. And here you might you might see there's a problem. Now we wanted to rotate it around the initial position, but we can't do that because you cannot add uh, rotations. However, you can multiply rotations, uh, which is basically in the in the world of rotation, it's the same as as a uh, you know, adding them together. I, I think, uh, oh, this is initial position. Initial rotation. So initial rota final rotation. Uh, again, we forgot. We should have just written that down. This is transfer free. So, so quaternion.lerp. Slurp. Slurp, boys. Um, so we're going from our current rotation to the, the product of final rotation and initial rotation. Initial rotation means our current rotation, whichever rotation we set at, by, at the start of the game. Uh, and final rotation is going to sort of offset our initial rotation. Uh, we, uh, obviously, you can see you can't, uh, you cannot add them. If I put a plus sign, that doesn't work. So you got to basically do this. And finally, we are going to multiply this by uh, smooth rotation, uh, which is, you know, the rotation amount we had before. Uh, and that's about it. We are done with the tilting. Uh, let's go back to Unity and let's see what we have here. This is very important. So rotation heavily depends. Uh, rotation can work based off how, um, where your pivot is. So you can see here I have the weapon script. I have all the rotations. Uh, and by default, what we had is, let me just, let me just show you. So if you were to go ahead and play, by default, you can see the AK-47 holder uh, is all the way down there uh, on the floor, uh, which is not correct. So if I were to play now, you'll see the rotation will be extremely odd. You see this? You see how odd that is? And it just it feels so weird, you know, like... Uh. So how do we fix this? Basically, you click on the objects that are the, the children objects of the AK-47 holder. You... Uh, unparent them so you can put them anywhere outside of it. I like to put it in the weapon holder. Uh, and then you basically have to move the pivot point, which we have here, which is AK-47 holder, to where your, your hand is. So you can play around with this uh, to get the right feel, but what you can do is, what I, what I like to do is I move it up, and I move it to where uh, the grip is, so you can see where the character is gripping onto the weapon, the handle. Uh, and I just like to put it in the almost in the center of this. Um, and that's about it. And and basically that is done. Uh, and what we can do is we can go ahead and put this back inside of it. So you can see now the pivot is this. Uh, and we parented the weapons back again. Uh, and then we can try playing it and you will see that rotation should work just as uh, you would expect it to work. Uh, and obviously I, I like to keep it at the X and Z axis, which I think gives a very dynamic look or don't feel you can see. Very dynamic, it feels, feels really nice. You know, you can play around with it and you can have it. Uh, sometimes I like to turn off the position rotation, uh, sorry, the position sway as a whole, just to get that even more dynamic feel. You can see how it feels like. It feels absolutely great in my opinion. And uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, there is one problem that I want to want to show you, which is this. If I hold the right click button, you can see the weapon just disappears. Uh, the reason behind that is because when we were aiming, we actually set some 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 constant values here in the aim position. So you have to recalibrate the aiming. And now, if you guys don't remember how the aiming worked, it's in the eighth part of the series. It's called aiming down sights. Um, do check out the video video again and see if you can watch it. You can sit through it and you can uh, see how to calibrate the aim position if you don't remember that already. We will work on weapon bobbing as well. So something, instead of the camera bobbing, the weapon bobbing, in my opinion, is kind of better and feels better and feels more responsive. But, you know, it's all about preference. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I'll probably work on weapon bobbing as well. Uh, and that is about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, yeah, also too, feel free to check my uh, Patreon and, uh, and Fiverr account, you know. Uh, if you guys want some ASMR, uh, never forget, I'm always here.